I don't know if those of you online can hear the bell ringing, um, but we just had the bell tolled. Welcome to you online. Welcome to you who have come out this morning. We're here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us, though we have failed in his service, and who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, and who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. So let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humankind. From the First World War, William Henry Beale, Robert Emmanuel Bryan, William John Bonner, Arthur Hayton, James Hayton, James James, Thomas George Lockyer, Roger John Nicholas, Frederick Henry Palmer, William Henry Rose, Alfred Sims, Obadiah John Sims, Pasco Spears, and from the Second World War, W.J. Joey Brewer, Joseph William Gerard, William Charles Gerard, Reginald Frank Langford, We remember also those who have died in more recent conflicts, serving their queen and country. They shall draw my bones, the queen of the left foot, age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace. God will. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. The mighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all our goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from John's Gospel. And then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary stayed in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, they shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. I love the cars going by and the cyclists, because this is an act of witness, and they may have forgotten, they may be on their way somewhere, and we are here to remind them. No one drives past, we're not reminding them, we're only reminding ourselves. So I think it's good. This year is a good year to celebrate, to remember remembrance. Because this year we should be able to empathise a lot more than ever before. We are in the midst of great upheaval. The kind of disruption that war brings, except perhaps the ration. But families are separated, unable to see each other. The news is full of sickness and strife. And our leaders, those in control and power, struggle to find a way through. And people we love are lost, are dying. And we are not able to be with them. Sometimes not even able to go to their funeral. All we can do is remember from a distance, like a corner of some foreign field. What must it have been like for those in the great wars who waited worryingly for news from the front, those who heard the worst news? And every death, whether via coronavirus or through war, is a personal tragedy, is an individual loss, someone's son or daughter, someone's beloved friend. But this is more than personal grief. 
grief. This is about corporate mourning. We remember that every village and town in this country lost someone to the wars. And probably every village and town in this country will lose someone to the virus, or we all know someone who has died through it. So today it is about a community mourning the loss of what could have been possible futures, all the riches that these people could have given that we don't have. And we're still in the midst of it, and we're still in shock at 50,000 nearly deaths from the virus. And it can feel quite bleak that we've struggled on through this far, and we thought we were through it, and yet now more is asked of us. When will this end? Yet those of us who have faith should know that this virus will not have the last word. Are we to be convinced by the doom and gloom all around us? Or should we lift our eyes to the power and glory of God? Should we let our spirits be bowed down? Or should we open our hearts? And be convinced that God's son Jesus conquered death rose again to resurrection life, that death is not the end. Like Mary and Martha, who so wanted to believe, and so Jesus brought back their brother Lazarus from the grave, we too need to know that the Lord of life is real and active. That one day all this will be redeemed, that justice will be done, and all this made good. We should take hope from all our community who are here, from our councillors, from the British Legion, from the beavers and brownies who have painted these amazing pebbles, from whoever has made the fall of uh, poppies down from the cross. This is the hope for the future. And the last word will be life. Today we hold all those we love and those who are lost, those who we remember, we hold them before a good and loving almighty God. But this is our hope, this is our faith. I used to have a friend who had a sticker on their Bible and it said, it's okay, I've skipped to the end, we win. Well, that's what it's all about. In the end, God will overcome. Amen. Short breath. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all who we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and elsewhere. As we honour their courage and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future. You are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. So I invite you to join in this act of commitment as we pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow humans, that we may help, encourage and comfort others 
support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. We say together, Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all mankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. In the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the Son of God and Savior Jesus Christ. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and those you love and remain with you this Remembrance Day and always. Amen.